Welcome to group B26 presentation on microwave filters. What is a filter, you may ask? A filter is, a, is an electronic circuit comprised of resistors, capacitors, inductors that are designed to select or remove unwanted frequency components of a signal or sound wave. There are four main types of filters, band stop, band pass, low pass, and high pass. A band stop filter removes a range of frequencies and keeps the rest while a band pass allows a desired range and removes the other frequencies, components. In contrast, low pass filters allow frequencies below a certain cutoff, and high pass allow any frequency above the cutoff to pass through. Before talking about microwave filters, we need to understand what microwaves are. Microwaves are a type of electromagnetic radiation with a wavelength between 1 mm to 1 meter that operate at frequencies between 300 MHz to 300 GHz. The applications for microwaves range from radar, communication, and heating up food. Microwave filters combine the two to operate at micro microwave frequencies just like a bandpass filter. The development of microwave filter technologies predate to essentially around the eve of World War II. Uh, following the events of the First World War, people started realizing that the traditional means of long distance communications via pigeon messenger just weren't cutting it. There were too many external factors that could have easily affected the outcome of transmission, and in some countries, people didn't even have means of adequate communications. This spurred the need for scientific research and development of equipment and techniques for military purposes. Located at places like the MIT Radiation Laboratory, the Harvard Radio Research Laboratory, and Bell Laboratories, much of the foundation of modern filter theory and practice took place during the years of the Second World War. For example, advancements on waveguide cavity filters were made at the MIT Radiation Laboratory, while at the Harvard Radio Research Laboratory, breakthroughs were made in broadband variable pass coaxial filters for ECM applications, as well as narrowband tunable coaxial resonator filters for search receivers. This was amazing for the war, as the practical use of ECMs, short for electronic countermeasure, was to detect and classify various passing signals, and if the signal in question happened to be an enemy signal, well, you best believe that you could counteract it with the emission of your own specialized signal. This is more commonly known as jamming a signal. As the war went on, so did the fight for more superior, sophisticated communication systems, and fast forward to today, our more advanced implementations of microwave filters is much thanks to the pioneers during the war. Uh, for example, we now have satellite communication. Satellites are extremely useful for relaying information signals from one place on Earth to another, and they can do so via microwave filters. There are waveguide cavity uh, bandpass filters in them, which, by the way, exhibit very low insertion loss, meaning that the signal doesn't lose power if it ends up going to a larger system. And these filters are great for frequency multiplexing. So when you're trying to send a message to the group chat to turn up on Saturday, just remember it's possible through the power of microwave filters. Also, probably a more quintessential application, Wi-Fi. You've probably seen numbers like 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz tacked onto the names of some Wi-Fi networks. These numbers are essentially the frequencies that your devices use when sending signals, more specifically microwaves, to and from the internet. Microwave filters are especially important in this case because they are what your router will use in order to filter out any sort of potential interference from nearby objects that are operating around the same frequency. So there are a lot of different types of microwave filters and in this slide we'll try to address some of them and their characteristics. For example, you have your lumped element LC filters, which consist of parallel or series inductors and capacitors. They have the advantage of being very compact, but their resonators have low quality factors, which essentially means they have a higher rate of energy loss, making their performance relatively poor. There's also your planar filters, which are a better compromise in terms of size and performance than the lumped LC filters, but they come at a premium because of the materials used to build them. Cavity filters have low insertion loss capability, but are large in their size. The list goes on, and different types of microwave filters will have different pros and cons. Um, the one that concerns us the most is the waveguide filter, uh, mostly because it's the basis for her chosen article. Uh, waveguide filters are essentially hollow tunnels that have very low energy loss because the energy is contained inside the guide in air rather than in a conductor. So with the low energy loss, it has a very high quality factor, in fact, up to a theoretical 10,000. And with a high quality factor, this means that we're able to design tightly controlled, sharp filters with very predictable results. The peer article we chose is Microwave Filters Using Waveguides Filled by Multi-Layer Dielectric. 
In this article, a new structure is proposed for microwave filters. The proposed structure is a multi-layer, longitudinal, and homogeneous waveguide, or LIW. This structure utilizes a waveguide filled by several dielectric layers, whereby the electric permittivity and the length of the layers are optimally obtained through the least mean squared method. The multiple dielectric layers each have their own filtering capabilities, so when put together in the LIW, the filtering effects are superimposed, giving rise to a band pass filter. The purpose of this article is to demonstrate the usefulness of the proposed structure and how it is an improvement over current continuous LIWs. This was done through optimizing the mathematical construct of an ideal LIW through electromagnetic and two-port network analysis. This proof of concept was then applied to an example design of an equal ripple X-band filter, which proves that this new proposed structure is practical. We will be attempting to simulate the structure based on one of the MATLAB tutorials found within OpenEMS, namely the rectangular waveguide. This concludes our brief, albeit informative, introduction to microwave filters. On behalf of Group B26, we would like to thank you for watching.